Hello Fabricators, how are you doing? How is the preview of Fabric coming along so far? Awesome, isn't it? If you are wondering, hey, I want to preview Fabric with my corporate data and those data are always behind firewalls. How can I securely connect to it from Fabric and start my preview? Good news is, I have got you covered. My name is Venkatesh Parasuraman and I am a Senior Program Manager in the Microsoft Fabric CAT team. Welcome to my first video on Fabric Security. Let's get started. If you want to preview Fabric with your non-sensitive data that are behind firewalls, there are several ways to achieve this goal. In this video, I am going to show you how you can use Synapse Spark to bring that data into Fabric One Lake. Yes, you heard that right, Synapse Spark. Now let's head over to my laptop. Uh, what I have got here is a storage account. This is an ADLS Gen 2 storage account. In this storage account, I have a container called Fabric Container. Inside the container, I have some delta tables. And if I go to the container properties, uh, especially the network settings here, as you can see, right now, I have uh, no security on this storage account. But this is not typically how storage accounts are deployed in a corporate environment. Typically, the storage accounts are behind firewalls. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select this option called public network access disabled. Now, when the public network access is disabled, uh, this storage account can only be accessed using private endpoints. And that's exactly what we are going to test now. I'm going to save my network settings of this storage account. Now, to test this, uh, I am going to go to my containers and if I open my fabric container, as you can see, I am not able to access the data inside my container because I am not coming in via a private endpoint of this storage account. Now let's see how we can get this data into fabric. For this, we are going to head over to our Synapse. Okay, now what I have here is my Synapse workspace. This Synapse workspace has been created with managed virtual network enabled. That's very important. Now let's head over to the Synapse Studio. Now I am in my Synapse Studio and in this Synapse Studio, the first thing that what I'm going to do is head over to the manage section and I'm going to create a managed private endpoint connection to my storage account. So I'm going to click on new manage private endpoint, pick up ADLS Gen2 storage account and I'm going to call this as fabric storage account, my storage account here and create. Now we can see that the managed private endpoint is in a provisioning state. If you leave it for a few minutes and check back with the refresh again, you will see that the provisioning has been succeeded. Okay, now uh, after a few minutes, now we see that the provisioning has been succeeded, but it is pending for approval. For this, let me head over to my storage account and let me go to my network settings. And if I go to my private endpoint connections, I can see that there is one private endpoint connection that is pending for approval. This is the managed private endpoint connection that we created in Synapse Studio. I'm going to select this connection and approve this. Now I see that my managed private endpoint connection has been approved. The next thing that I want to ensure is access control. So if I go to my access control settings in my storage account and click check access, I see that I have a storage blob data contributor access. This allows me to read write data into my storage blob containers. Now that we have our source, which is ADLS Gen 2 connection set up from Synapse, it's time to set up our destination, which is Microsoft Fabric. Now let's head over to Microsoft Fabric. Welcome to Microsoft Fabric. Now I'm going to select Synapse Data Engineering Persona and I'm going to select a workspace that I have already created. This workspace currently is empty. I have no artifacts in this workspace. Now I'm going to click on new and create a lake house artifact. I'm going to name this lake house as Fabric Security LH and create. Our fabric lake house has been created. Now it's time to get data into this lake house from ADLS Gen 2. For that, 
we are going to head over to our Synapse Studio. Now I am back in my Synapse Studio. In here, I am going to create a new notebook. My notebook has been created. I am going to attach it to my existing Spark pool. Now I have specified my source table path. The source table path is the path to the existing Delta Lake folder in ADLS Gen 2. Now it's time to specify our destination path. For that, I'm going to head over to Fabric. From here, I'm going to click Tables and Properties and copy this ABFSS path and go back to Synapse and paste it here. It's interesting to note that both my source path and the destination path looks very similar. That is because one lake behind the scenes provides the same DFS APIs that ADLS Gen 2 provides. Now, if we have a close look at the domain, in ADLS, I have my storage account name, which is globally unique for each storage account, .dfs.core.windows.net. Whereas in one lake, my domain name is onelake.dfs.fabric.microsoft.com regardless of whichever workspace and lake house that I am connecting to. And here I can see my workspace ID at onelake.dfs.fabric.microsoft.com which is a common domain and followed by my lake house ID. This is the lake house artifact ID slash tables. So if we were to connect to a different lake house in a different workspace, only this workspace ID and the lake house ID is going to change, whereas the domain remains the same. Now it's time to load our data into Fabric One Lake. In this simple piece of code, what I am doing here is I am just reading my Delta Lake source folder into a data frame and I am writing it out to One Lake in the Delta format by specifying my table name. Let's go ahead and execute this notebook. Now our notebook has been successfully executed. Now it's time to go and check the fabric lake house. I'm back in my fabric workspace. I'm going to open this fabric security lake house and voila, we see the patient tables in our lake house. From here, we can create a new notebook and start our transformations in fabric or we can create a new Power BI report using the direct lake. Wait a minute, we haven't specified any authentication or access token in this piece of code. Then how is it working? That's the beauty of it. This Synapse Spark notebook is executing in my Azure Active Directory user context. And it is using my Azure Active Directory token to authenticate to my source ADLS containers as well as it is using the same Azure AD access tokens to authenticate to the one lake. That's why we don't have to specify any additional access tokens or authorization in this. It simply works. Let's take a look at what we have done so far. We have taken a delta table in the ADLS Gen 2 and we have disabled the public access to the storage account. And we have created a managed private endpoint from Synapse Studio to the storage account. And also we have created a lake house in the Microsoft Fabric. And finally, we loaded the data from the ADLS storage into the one lake using the ABFSS DFS API of the one lake. During this process, the data is encrypted at transit using TLS 1.2 as we are using ABFSS protocol. Also, the data is encrypted at rest on the one lake using platform managed keys. You can ask me, hey, aren't we duplicating data again from ADLS to one lake? You are right. We will eventually have shortcuts from one lake working directly with the ADLS behind firewalls. But until that time, this is just a workaround to get you started with your POC or pilot in Fabric. Also, if you are starting a greenfield project, you can directly go to your source systems and pull data into one lake using this approach, thereby avoiding data duplications. I know what you're thinking. Many of your source systems are in on-prem behind firewalls. How can you bring those data in, right? That's going to be my next video. Thanks for watching this video. 
If you have any questions on fabric, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. If you have ideas to make fabric better, you can post them on ideas.fabric.microsoft.com. Stay tuned for more videos.